This man is Subhash Kapoor, an art dealer on the surface but a smuggler in reality. But he's no ordinary smuggler. He's convicted of theft and illegal export of 19 idols from the Vardaraj Perumal Temple in Tamil Nadu, valued at over 94 crore rupees. He's presently in prison in India serving a sentence, arrested first by the German police, charged in the United States of America and then extradited to India in a case of theft of Chola dynasty artifacts. How did he pull this off? According to American authorities, Kapoor ran an art gallery where more than 2,500 items were trafficked by his network. India's police said he first verified the idol's value from the experts and would then bribe the thieves to smuggle all of these artifacts and idols via a road route. The cost of these idols was estimated to be worth over $143 million. Sadly, he's not the only one. It's a mind-boggling chain trail of smuggling precious artifacts out of India bought by the Western nations, kept in their museums for display, but are now making their way back into our country. But this is no easy exercise. It's a massive effort of repatriation and bilateral relationship. So stay tuned as I tell you in this very important Homeland Explainer. This bronze statue belongs to India from 17th century. The red sandstone couple artifact dated 12th to 13th century from central India a marble arch parikara from 12th century. All of these were trafficked out of India in different periods. Some were connected to Kapoor and other to other international smugglers. Some of these items were displayed at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in the United States of America, some at the Yale University. Both announced the return of most of these objects which recently returned to India. Just weeks after Prime Minister Narendra Modi's state visit to the USA, 105 art commodities have been received at the Indian Consulate in New York. According to a government release, the artifacts represent a wide geographical spread in terms of their origin in India. 47 from East, 27 from South, 22 from Central India, 6 from North and 3 from Western India. Not only from the United States of America, but also repatriated from Canada was this Annapurna statue stolen from Benares dated 18th century, brought back to India after 108 years. Remember the mega ceremony in 2021 to install this idol in the Kashi Vishwanath Dham. A report in the Indian Express's investigative series even revealed that the Metropolitan Museum of Art's formidable Asia collection included at least 94 artifacts of Jammu and Kashmir origin. These are sculptures, paintings and manuscripts, none of which had details in their provenance of the background documents or when they were moved out and by whom. This reflects a suspicious collection. Contacting and confronting the Western nations is a strategy that is yielding results. As recent as 1990 in Jammu and Kashmir, when terrorism had erupted, stolen from a temple in Pulwama was this 18-armed Durga idol in Mahisha Sur Mardini Avtar. This rare 10th century artifact is made of lush greenstone, was first spotted years later in Germany's Linden State Museum for Ethnology. The ASI received a tip-off. Investigation started, governments were contacted and in 2016, this idol was brought back into India after many efforts. Prime Minister Modi had received it from the German Chancellor Angela Merkel. So what is the procedure? Once an item is confirmed to be ours and the government intervenes, the procedure usually is that the antiquities are returned first to the Indian authorities abroad, like a mission or an Indian High Commission. Then the External Affairs Ministry informs the Archaeological Survey of India, which is the custodian for these objects. ASI verifies the repatriated object, then physically returns it to India. So multiple layers, including cooperation from other nations, is needed in this. Look at this ceremonial Indo-Persian talwar, believed to date back to 14th century. The sword is shaped like a snake, has serrated edges with gold etchings of an elephant and tigers. This was the sword of the Nizam of Hyderabad till 1905. What remains a mystery is how this sword was allegedly sold by Nizam's Prime Minister Maharaja Kishan Prasad to a British general Sir Archibald Hunter. Anyway, this was packed into crates at the Glasgow Museum Resort Centre and transferred to the Archaeological Survey of India after the issue was raised to the government. Remember that for any authority to return items is a full-fledged mission. The Glasgow Museums in Scotland agreed to return seven stolen artefacts to India. For this, the delegates from the Indian High Commission had to sign an agreement. Ownership transfer documents were cleared as well. This is one of the first repatriations considered from the United Kingdom in 2022. 
there were 14th century carvings, 11th century stone door jams from Kanpur temple, which was stolen from shrines and temples in the 19th century. This just keeps turning so bizarre and will also make you very, very angry. Here's why. An Indian idol of goat-headed yogini dating back to the 10th century was illegally removed from a village temple in Uttar Pradesh over 40 years ago and was discovered in a private garden, randomly kept collecting moss in England. A similar sculpture of the buffalo-headed Vrishnana Yogini, apparently stolen from the same temple at Lokhari village, was found in Paris. Connect the dots of how statues from India are found in different Western nations. It's nerve-wracking how these Western nations are so eager to keep Indian heritage items, sometimes unknowingly that it is smuggled out, and sometimes fully aware that it belongs solely to Indian territory. And some are fighting back this monstrosity now. Indian Pride Project, it was co-founded in 2014 by S. Vijay Kumar and Anurag Saxena and joined by now activists from all over the world. They help identify stolen religious artifacts from Indian temples and secure their return to their original rightful place. They of course coordinate with the government for this. They have helped the government return several artifacts back to India, processing the requisite documentation, for example with the British government and with Indian authorities. As on April 24, 2023, 251 invaluable antiquities of Indian origin have been confirmed retrieved back from different nations, out of which 238 were brought back since 2014. But sources say more than 50,000 art objects have been smuggled out of India till 1989. This is not just about the United States of America or the United Kingdom. Our heritage objects are even spotted in Australia. These were being held in the National Gallery of Australia. On display, some were statues of Lord Shiva and his disciples, worshipping Shakti, Lord Vishnu and his avatars, including from the Jain tradition. Because India and Australia have now been strengthening their friendship, therefore in March 2022, 29 antiquities were repatriated to India and how. So now you know that the Archaeological Survey of India's responsibility is not just to undertake archaeological research and conservation, but it's also to recover precious stolen antiquities. As Parliament session is on, on 24 July 2023, our lawmakers have recommended establishing a dedicated cultural heritage squad for the recovery of stolen antiquities. That means also have a multi-department trained task force of officers in various aspects of retrieval that can be followed as is in other countries too. Of course, all eyes will now be on the much-discussed Kohinoor diamond. But while we're at it, such initiatives can succeed only and also with international cooperation newly developed mechanisms, proper documentation by India, but above all, there needs to be an end to the desperation of Western nations to hoard our items that do not belong to them, that belongs to India, always did. And it is time for reparation now. Thank you for watching.